I love nothing more than coming home, opening the house up, maybe getting a meal started and seeing what the family has been up to for the day. Hi, I'm Rochelle. And I'm Matt. We're the owners of Corland House and also the directors of Secret Gardens. Our home is situated about four blocks back from Coogee Beach and we're essentially at the bottom of a steep valley. It's discreetly tucked behind a weeping myrtle. Uh, so even before you arrive at the gates, it feels expansive. It certainly feels unique, but what really leaves the lasting impression on all of our guests is that connection with the outdoor space and that beauty that's been created and how the two work harmoniously together, the architecture of the home and the garden and one makes the other shine. We initially purchased the property 10 years ago. So when we moved in, the first stage was essentially putting the pool in and replacing the garages at the front. And then we renovated two years ago to really change the house to suit what we were trying to achieve, which was a house for young adults. And we knew that we had the skills and the desire to turn it into something really unique and create our own secret garden, but close to the coast, close to the city, and it was really going to offer everything that our family needed. My name is Jonathan Spicer. I'm the director of Spicer Architecture. I am the architect for Cool and House. Matt and Rochelle were introduced to me uh, through mutual friends. Um, so I met Matt and Rochelle here and we did a walkthrough together. It was a really exciting opportunity for me. I was obviously very much looking forward to working and learning from Matt Cantwell through the process of design. And both Matt and Rochelle understood the importance of integrating nature and planting as a way to define spaces, but also as a way to create zones between public and private, which uh, is something that I'm also very passionate about. So the brief was essentially to knock down the entire private section of the house, maintain the entertaining areas that we're in now, but give them a new life and an upgrade. The design of the new private areas was to ensure that there was space to not only obviously sleep and live in, but also study and work and relax. The other design parameter was to ensure that almost every angle of the house looks onto a garden or planting vista. Clearly the garden aspect of this project was really important given our occupation, but it was also important because of the, the nature of this site. It is unusual proportions, this block. It's essentially 70 metres long and nine metres wide. So it was really important with those proportions to ensure that we were connecting with the greater landscape and neighbouring trees and gardens and just providing that really important connection with the natural aspect. I would say the appearance of the house is modernist and contemporary with an almost open tropical feel. And the inspiration behind this design was quite literally Matt and Rochelle's business. Um, there's secret gardens everywhere. Secret Gardens has been established for about 30 years now. Rochelle joined uh, exactly 17 years ago when our first was born. Clearly she has a different skill set with a business background, but also a deep love for design. And so it's been a really easy working relationship, not just at work, but at home as well. Every great project takes a team effort. Um, obviously, the working relationship between Rochelle and I, uh, with Jonathan, our architect, our interior designer, Trudy, and Darren from Pride and Passion was absolutely amazing throughout the process. His attention to detail is evident in every part of the house. One example of that is the brickwork. So the wall itself is a feature. It's in both of the boys' bedrooms and extends out to the front area of the house as well. So we've added some natural tones, such as the floorboards and in the kitchen, just to add some warmth to the house and to work well with the whites and the greys. Rochelle was really great to work with in materials. She really knew what she wanted and it was a very simple and easy process to define the spaces relatively quickly. 
working with Jonathan, it was such a collaborative process all the way through. There were elements where we would pair back on things or change things, and Jonathan was great at responding to that brief. So selecting all of the finishes and materials, it was really important to have a very neutral palette. And the intention between keeping a simple and a neutral palette was every room in the house has a garden outlook. We didn't want the interiors to compete with the external areas. We really wanted the external areas to be the heroes. Designing your own home as a design professional is always a little bit of a challenge, particularly when you're designing for your own family. There's a lot of pressure in relation to that. So eventually you have to commit to what is the best alternative and, you know, the structural form of the garden is always the starting point and an important element of the garden design, but it's never complete without a strong planting scheme. Mm. I'm a real plant enthusiast, so there's areas, particularly like the cactus garden internally, that was my opportunity to have a living sculpture garden and enable light to be drawn in year round. So it's really hard to pick a favourite spot in the garden. I think though that what is the telltale sign of a success is seeing the garden used. Um, seeing the family take advantage of all of the spaces uh, for it to really be able to perform. And Christmas Day is an example. There were 40 people here for lunch and it was just a beautiful day. The house doesn't feel crowded. People were spilled from the dining room right through down to the fire pit area, sitting outside. The house has that relaxing effect. It's not precious. People tend to come in and sit on couches, find their space for the day and settle, which is really lovely. <laughs>